Nothing like a little tractor work to start the day, huh? We got our extra grates in, and we got some other cool stuff behind us. I'll tell you about that later. But uh, I'm taking this out there now to get the grates put up so we can say the microgreen shelves are all done. Very excited about that. Well, today is a really exciting day because, sorry for that, with this particular grate right here going in, I am now done with all capacity increasing conversion for microgreens for this year. Okay, uh, so welcome. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time here, welcome uh, to you and thanks to everyone who's been here for so long. Appreciate you guys following along. This is a pretty big event. Um, we went from our hodgepodge of aquaponics and microgreens from last year to a extremely robust microgreen uh, growth facility as well as a huge amount of aquaponic space that we've now been able to recapture uh, all this used to have to go to microgreens and now microgreens go up here and we get all of this aquaponic space back. So it's gonna be game on time as far as growing aquaponics. Uh, today, what I wanna share with you, uh, besides just the awesomeness of getting uh, this done. Whew, catch my breath, it's so awesome. And I'm out of shape. Anyway, I shouldn't be out of shape, I work too hard. Moving on. Today, we have a shipment. Uh, a big shipment uh, that came in from uh, Nuna Innovations. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, go check out their website, www.nunainnovations.com. I'll put it down in the description so you can go check it out. But they sent me flooring. Um, so I was working with them. They reached out to me actually. Uh, they were watching our YouTube channel and uh, they saw that we had a need and uh, they, they actually contacted me. So uh, here's a project for the day. Uh, kind of worth a good backstory first. And that backstory is when we first decided to build this building, we did not need to put in any flooring whatsoever, other than this rock, that was the plan. Now our mission here uh, is to provide sustainable food and energy to our local communities, and eventually communities around the world. And the way we're doing that is by trying to combine a few different solutions that are out there, different systems, if you will. Anaerobic digester, solar power, aquaponics. We want to bring all those things together and figure out how to make them all work in a unified, integrated way to provide you the food and energy that you would need for a family of four. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. And we want to get that all really refined with the automation to control all of it so that we can put it in something as small as a shipping container and get it to people wherever they're at. Uh, or be able to send it on mission to places like in third world countries or underdeveloped countries uh, that need more food production capability. We like to be able to send our system to them. That's why we're doing all this. And uh, so my wife and I, we've you know, cashed out retirement. We've invested every dollar we have. We're about $200,000 of our own money invested into this. And we're really close, but we're also out of money. So we decided that we need to start making money by using this thing. And we did research and we figured out that microgreens are a great way for us to be able to generate some revenue to pay for everything. So we are trying to sell microgreens now to help pay for everything that we're trying to do to accomplish our higher, higher calling, higher mission. Um, and originally this building wasn't designed for microgreens. So this year we've refactored everything so that now we can grow microgreens like the lane behind me here and all the racking that we've been putting in. Um, and it's great. But we also put in this big processing lane. And a challenge with this processing lane is that when you use it, you have a gravel floor. Now that's not a problem because you walk on it. The problem is, is that seeds and little pieces of plant get down in there. And that causes uh, plants to grow, like it's seed, or a rotting environment, which is not good. So we needed to put a floor in. So I started researching different flooring options, and the company Nuna Innovations reached out to me and said, hey, we got something we think would work for you. So I said, well, okay, well, let's check it out. And I was blown away. Uh, they have this click-in flooring 
uh, which was a subscriber recommendation, by the way. The, the subscriber said, hey, you should look into something like this. So this is actually coming right from the subscriber to do something exactly like this. So golf clap. Uh, so we checked it out, and sure enough, this looks like a great product. It really looks like it's going to meet our needs. And I'm really excited about the click-in pouring over cement because this is still a prototype. This is a prototype environment. We are constantly changing things as we learn how to do things better uh, from experience. So if I put a concrete floor down or a more permanent floor, well, what if the piping that I laid in the ground is in the wrong spot? What if the wiring needs to be redone or, or moved around? Well, then you're cutting wires and, and leaving stuff in the ground and, and having to buy more product and uh, more money, and that's just that's no fun. It costs a lot. So, what we want to do here is have a floor that if we want to change something, we could. We could lift up the floor and put something else in. And sure enough, Nuna Innovations and their product, their, uh, the click-in floor that they have, it's meant for a high Arctic uh, environment. Uh, it is super tough. So, I'm here with uh, a special guest, Paul. Uh, Paul is from Nuna Innovations? Correct. And uh, they have... Uh, we're working together on helping solve the flooring problem out in the uh, habitat there. So I wanted to ask Paul just some questions about his company because it's pretty neat when I, when I looked them up. So you guys are really known for uh, up north, right? Yes. Uh, we are 60% owned by the Aborigine people of the Arctic. Okay. And then the other 40% is our company, Nuna logistics okay uh, and we have Alaska Canada uh, and then I represent the Northwest but historically it was our working with the Aborigine people to develop the resources in their territories uh, in the Arctic zone so you guys have this product here this yeah. is the uh, port of floor max now I saw this and I almost freaked out. Uh, I had a minor freak out actually because it's such an amazing thing. Actually, my subscribers recommended uh, this type of flooring and finding you guys was really, really cool. So tell me a little bit about this flooring. Um, how strong is this? Uh, this, the max, is like 65,000 pound load weight. Uh, it's, they have different, Floorings, uh, we tend to, for our customers, deal into the max. Uh, floors, the big stuff. The big stuff. Yeah. Just because of the equipment that we experience. Uh, we make portable shops, floors with it, so they come in, you can put your equipment on it. The mechanic's got a clean workspace underneath it. Uh, we'll lay plastics underneath it, so any spills or anything we keep off the tundra or facilities uh, but they're easy to install uh, and the background of this material has come from the military okay the military uses it quite a bit because it's easy for them to transport around the world to set up portable nature real shops. fast yeah uh, and but in the Arctic one of the biggest problems is transportation so we look at lightweight products that we can put, put on aircraft to get out to sites and you don't have to try to bring in a lot of equipment to level floors, pour concrete, or do other things. Okay. It's all designed to be rapidly deployable. Well, that, that was big for me. One of the reasons why I chose this product is because uh, I didn't want to pour cement through the entire middle of the building because I have wiring underneath i have plumbing underneath and because it's a prototype i don't know if that wiring and that plumbing is going to stay there for very long yeah. so uh when i saw this like i said i had a minor just freak out i thought it was totally awesome and i'm so excited that it's here i saw the pictures you guys can put like the big big mining trucks on yeah. this like tires the size the, yeah. the taller than me drive on this stuff oh, yeah. so that's pretty hardcore for our martian habitat here but it just is a testimony to uh, how good a product this is. So I also looked up, this is made from 100% recycled material. 100% recycled is important for us because we are trying to do the fully sustainable thing and uh, 
if you go on to their website, it's uh, nunainnovations.com. Yeah. They have some of their own YouTube videos that you can check out of their product where they show they actually take these back and they recycle them back through their, their plant. And it's pretty neat knowing that we have it. It's also made in the USA, I understand. Yes, it is. Very cool. These are like Legos for adults. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and again, what I like about all our products primarily is they're very simple to install. These are 1,200 pounds uh, pallets. Uh, pretty cool. So these come, this right here, they're, they look like what, one foot by one foot, a little bit over one foot yeah. uh, squares. Now these are all connected to each other. Yes. Um, so we're going to take this, this is a three foot by seven foot section and uh, we're going to, we've got one on the ground here. So these are already connected so yeah. I don't want to mess with these rivets. Is that the... So we're going to just gonna flip it over and let's grab another panel. Okay. This way, right here. There, line it up on there. Oops. Slots. Okay. That's it. Wow. That is it. And it bends. So that was my question: is how level does the ground have to be? And this ground is not perfectly level. You have a little bit of bounce there, but. And then locking it together, it would even. It would. It would stop the bouncy. It would stop the bouncing too because you lock the panels. Okay, so then I don't, just because they're hard to put, take out. Well, we got this side here locked. Okay. You can lock on this. Oh, yeah. And now lock on that side without it. Yeah, and see it bouncing there a little bit. So once we put those in. You won't have this because you get the same thing here. This has more force. It'll lift it up, it. yeah. That's cool. What a cool thing. <laughs> so it won't take long for you to lay out your floor because... Yeah. We have uh, two sections uh, that are together. So when they shipped them to me, we got them the larger size because of the area that I need to cover. But you can actually get them down to just the individual panels. In this case, we have two panels by, was it, five connected to each other. And here we put our first two down. And boy, was it easy. You just carry them in place. They drop in real easy. And then you just have these locks that go right here. And the uh, ground here is not even, but you can see how nice of a surface it creates uh, by just putting it down. And then you put the locks in place and it'll lift the lower section up and connect the higher section to it. So like this right here is in an uneven spot, but it's together. So I am, <laughs> I'm totally jazzed right now. I mean, this is gonna be so cool putting this down and uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna make Mrs. Martian really, really happy. So that's important. And what do we let me what do we got there? So these are the uh, this is the like if you wanted to have a ramp, like a, a forklift could drive up on that, or a, a pallet mover, yep, or something. And so you won't have a trip hazard. Okay. On and off ramp, and basically this is a single corner piece where you end, okay. you end so when you. end up with a finished wow oh okay i was wondering yeah how you just leave them exposed or do you have have a corner so you guys actually have the corner pieces and everything yeah then you can put right in what yeah. a cool product so you finish up and so uh like the way you're gonna want to lay yeah uh, you may want to have One, a ramp two. yeah up front both ends that way you won't have tripping coming on and off okay of it and then Wow, so cool. I, I learned when I was talking to the sales guy, Paul, he, he told me, you know, they, like when they go into the Arctic, they have to essentially pack it in, pack it out. They can't make permanent modifications up there. So everything basically floats uh, on this flooring that they sell. So I'm really excited about putting that flooring in. Uh, it's gonna be perfect for our environment. It's gonna be super strong, super tough, easy to clean. So what we got to do though, the bad, unfortunate bad part is I have to take all the stuff that I put up. We need to get it all out of here. We need to rake this stuff as level as we can get it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly level, just good enough. 
and then we're going to cover up everything with this new flooring. So I think that's enough talky-talky. Let's start doing some walkie-walkie.